welcome back. Today, we're going to learn about mid-century designs. It's going to be a mixed media project, and I love this type of art, and I think you will too. It's clean, it's flat planes, it came after the Industrial Revolution, so that you know everything was new, and they were mass producing everything. So these designs were on cookware and draperies and sheets and towels and your tablecloths. Sometimes they were on your clothing. The colors were muted, more of a pastel. And this was also the time that they invented acrylic paint. So it was a big revolution of change. So let's go make a beautiful mixed media mid-century design. We are going to begin our mixed media mid-century design. Remember, clothing, wallpaper, oh my goodness, your cookware, everything had a design on it during this time. I was fortunate to find these paint chips from the Oriental Trading Company that are pre-cut into circles. And they were actually almost the perfect shades, that muted shade. So I bought a couple of bags of them because it was very, very, very good to have for something like this and all other types of artwork. This is how I put them so I could look at them. Then I chose my colors. I laid them out. I looked to see what ones looked very, very good together. And remember, clean, flat designs. Let's peek. This is the first one I did. And I did a print over it, an imprint over it, so that it would give it that vibe of the time, which is these circles and this kind of space age look, which is really appealing and clean, balanced. And that's the key. You want to have good colors and balance. And we're going to be doing this one. I chose these colors. I love these colors together. This one did not come. I actually cut this from a piece because that kind of a olive green is very, very popular. I glued all of these down and actually I glued this one a little close, which will throw the balance off, but we're doing a pattern. Think about it. Fabric, wallpaper, your kitchen tablecloth, whatever. You lay them out, you play with them before you actually glue them. I used the heavy duty tacky glue because they have a little bit of a shine on them. So let's glue the rest of these down. This is my favorite tool because you need to glue it on heavy. This one's glued, I have to check. Do this. And remember the edges are the most important. And I'm gonna put this down. And the good part about the little finish on it is you can move them around a little bit. This one's down, this one is not. I actually originally had light blue for this, but it didn't lend itself. It didn't make my eyes happy, so I changed it. And, oh, dip in the glue again. It's just like a little, I don't know, this always reminds me of cotton candy. And here, try to line them up. Remember, you're a human, you're not a machine, so it's going to be not exactly perfect, but we like that. Dip again, swirl around the edges. You can almost see that shine that it has on it. And lay this down. And then there's going to be one more. This is the one that I pushed in a little too hard and it's glued down. But once I put my black on it, it won't show as much. It's a balance of the negative and the positive space that's important that the colors and your design now you're going to take your towel and push and you remember the reason why we do this so that if any glue squirts out the sides it's going to get stuck on the paper towel these will try to pop up because they are thick whoop just move that one all on my own all right now we're going to get to the print part of it i'm going to move my glue out of the way bring in my Tempera paint. We're using tempera paint. And what I did is I made designs that are very mid-century designs. This one I love. It, it reminds me actually of the Paisley print, which is an influence. All I did was drew it on a piece of cardboard and glued this to it. You have to wait a couple of hours till it dries. 
So we'll use these two today. And then they also have a lot of straight lines. If you notice, I have straight lines and I have dots. So you'll need some of that saved cardboard of yours. And I've mentioned this before, if you leave the paint dry on it, it actually picks the paint up easier. And then this one is my little fixer. If anything needs fixing, I'm using this one. All right, so I've got my dots. I've got this, I've got this. I'm not sure if these will go together. I'm gonna to use this one first because I really like it. You're going to get your tempera paint, which I just got on my green. Let's see if I can get it off. Oh yeah, it'll be a little, it'll be a little bit of a dot, but like I said, not machines. And you're going to go around the string or yarn that you use, making sure it's a cotton one, will absorb this color. You can see I used it last time. So it will sit on the top a little better. Twirl it. And, just, and if you notice there's some on the cardboard, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be pushing that hard when you do this imprint. All right, double check it. With black, you can't tell. I think this time I'm, nah. Let's go down. I wonder if I can get two. Let's try this right in the middle. I'm going to try to do four this time. Push, make sure you push everywhere. Lift it up gently, there we go. Now we're gonna do that again, a little bit more. I think this is why I only did two because this is a little complicated as far as the design goes and it takes a little more time. All right. Second one, you don't need to put as much paint on it. I am, I'm gonna do four, I think. It's kind of a mystery because you can't see everything. Push. This one will probably be darker. I have a kind of a feeling that we're going to have darker here. Yep, I was right. So I'm going to continue this below. If I put it in the middle, it'll start looking more like, I don't know, a face or something like that. I don't really want it to look like anything but a design. A clean 1950s design that could be put on anything. All right, let's see how my lining up goes. I think I'm gonna be a little off to the side, but that's all right. But the fun of it is to do it. Oh yeah, not too bad. So what I'm gonna do is try to aim to bring that one off to the side. Just because one didn't match doesn't mean you can't match the other one. All righty, a little bit more. <laughs> Getting a little sloppy here, but we are artists, we can be sloppy. All right, let's see. Here's where it is. Let's try to do it the same type of way. And push. You're gonna get a little bit on your fingers, but temper paint dries really quickly. All right, so there's the beginning. Now is when I'm gonna come in with my lines. I don't think this would go well, just because the shape doesn't, it doesn't really match. It matches a little bit in the center, but I think if I put it in there, they did quite a bit of straight lines. So let's do our straight lines. And notice it will drip a little bit. It's the way it works. And this one's popping up. It's not quite dry. Both directions, you wanna balance this out. So let's go in the center. And then we're going to go back with dots. The good part about this is, is after you do this, you can always add to it. Um, I think I'm gonna go up here too and divide that. All right, that's there. Now I'll take, I just use the back of a pencil. It's the perfect size. We're gonna put our dots in to pull it all together. Dot, dot. It's mixed media. You're using paint, glue, and paper. And you're making something amazing. Wherever you see an open negative spot, and you feel it needs to have something to fill it in, to pull it into a pattern, go for it. Now these were simple patterns. Some of them were not. Check that out. It didn't take any time at all. We used simple materials. And look at this beautiful design. Can you imagine just beautiful drapes in your living room, something like that? Look up mid-century designs. See the different ones that there are. They're spectacular. You will enjoy yourself and you will amaze your friends. Simple patterns, simple materials,
taking your black to make it that perfect mid-century design. Everyone's going to be so impressed. Enjoy yourself and again, share it with someone else.